Hey, and welcome to Board With Life News for February 11th. Today I'm going to talk to you about a new print-and-play game called The Mountain, Dice Parados, a Star Wars retheme of Loop and Louie, as well as the Kickstarter for Floating Market. Let's get to it! Hey, I'm Chris. Welcome to Board With Life News. As far as Board With Life News goes, yesterday we released a Let's Play video of Machi Koro, and Paul Dean from Shut Up and Sit Down joined us for that, so you should definitely go check that out, because he's a handsome British person that you can look at with your eyes. Um, tomorrow we'll be releasing a mailbag version on our RPG podcast that links are in the description for you to go to that. That's the podcast where we play D&D. We asked you guys um, to give us some questions, and then we sat down and answered those. Um, along with that, we actually uh, were very pleasantly surprised yesterday because we looked. I was just browsing the um, Board Game Geek Golden Geek Award nominees, uh, just looking through games and stuff, and it turns out we got nominated for Best RPG Podcast. Um, so that's really super exciting and uh, really flattering and not at all something we expected. Um, so that's cool. If you guys want to go vote for any of the games, um, not just our RPG thing, but Whoever you like, um, I'll put a link down below, and if you guys are board game fans, you, maybe you aren't going to go to the RPG side of things, because you don't know that much about it, but if you do like our podcast, uh, we would very much appreciate a vote um, for that, if you like that, um, as well as go check out those other podcasts that we're up against, because they're all really good, and almost all of them I listen to regularly and really enjoy them, um, and that's in the kind of like RPG voting section. There's like board games and RPGs and video games. So obviously RPG podcast is in that section. Um, and thank you very much to Board Game Geek for nominating us. That's super cool. Speaking of the Golden Geek Awards, uh, one of my favorite categories in the Golden Geek Awards is the print and play games because it's a really cool way to find out about print and play games because a lot of these fly under the radar unless you're kind of really embedded in that community. Um, and a lot of these are often very interesting ideas. For example, one I actually talked about on the news like a year ago was called And Then We Held Hands, um, which was designed for the Global Game Jam last year, which is a big giant event where a bunch of designers get together all over the world and design a game in 48 hours, I think, a weekend, something like that. Um, and that was kind of a very interesting game, a two-player game where it, you're a couple in a, in a fight and you're trying to kind of get to a mutual understanding, a place of mutual understanding. It's sort of like Hanabi, that kind of thing, but it's definitely a very interesting concept and theme for a board game, and it was eliciting um, different emotions than you normally get from board games. Well, the designers of that game have designed another game for this year's Global Game Jam, and it is actually even more interesting sounding. It's called The Mountain, a solo board game experience. And what this game is is basically you've achieved the greatest feat in your entire life. You have climbed to the summit of this great mountain, and that's where the game starts. And now you're walking down the mountain, and it's not about physically demanding stuff, it's mentally demanding, where now you're contemplating, like, what are you doing in life now that you've created, like, achieved this great goal? And it's a storytelling game, but only solo. So you get cards that are going to talk to you about your past, or your spirit, or your future, and different things, and that's all kind of like your contemplative nature uh, as you're sort of taking account of what your life is now coming down a mountain, which is certainly not <laughs> like any game I've played. And it's almost like, I mean, it's it's not a role-playing game, I guess, but it is it is a storytelling game, but a solo storytelling game. Uh, it's very interesting. They actually have really beautiful artwork on it. Uh, and you can go on BoardGameGeek and download the print-and-play files for free and play it. So you should do that if that sounds interesting to you because they're using a game as like an ex like an emotional exploration tool which is very creative and something that I would love to see more of in the hobby. And now on the opposite side of the game spectrum, uh, Dice Parados is a Korean game that is a dice rolling press your luck game. Uh, this has players competing as bandits to try to kill each other off. The thing I found really interesting about it is you've got these cool little custom uh, player screens that hide your dice that are your bandits, but they're set up like forts and you can put them like on top of it and stuff like that. I thought it was really cute um, and seemed like just kind of a fun, light-hearted game. Uh, so yeah, cool. And also games from Korea. Good. I like when we're getting games from all over the world now, and I think that's a big product of the kind of the Japanese game explosion that happened with Love Letter, and now people are going like, oh, wait, there are games that don't come from Europe or America. So uh, excited to see more of those games. Hasbro announced that they are going to do a retheme of Looping Louie, which is a very popular uh, dexterity game, and it's going to be Looping Chewie, where they got the Star Wars license, or they're using their Star Wars license to make this uh, Chewie in, a, in the Millennium Falcon going through avoiding stormtroopers. 
Uh, the way the game works is basically you're in an airplane, or in this case a Millennium Falcon, and it goes around and you kind of have to bounce it up over your guys. And it's a lot of fun and uh, it, great for all ages, like just as much fun for a five-year-old as it is for a 30-year-old. It's such a certainly not a game that I was expecting to get a Star Wars retheme. But um, I'm happy for it, because it'll introduce new people to a good game. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure that's going to be in every store ever, because it's Hasbro. The Kickstarter this week is for Floating Market. Floating Market is a betting, dice-rolling, worker placement game. It has a really beautiful, wonderful theme where it's the Floating Market and I think, uh, Thailand? I want to say? I don't know. I hope it's Thailand. Um, where uh, all the boats with different fruits and different things like that are on them in a river. And you all play grandchildren trying to collect fruit for your grandmother uh, who wants to make a fruit salad. And she's had a long day at the bazaar and wants to just hang out and not have to shop. Uh, so that's a really creative, fun theme. It has really beautiful artwork. Uh, it has cool polyhedral dye of different, different sidesnesses. Sidesnesses is the word I was looking for. Uh, so don't look that up because just trust me, it's real. Uh, it costs $29 right now on Kickstarter. But it has, that doesn't include shipping, so there's an extra $10 shipping, so it's actually like $39. Um, so I don't even know how they did that on Kickstarter, but it was magical where it just automatically adds the money in. Um, but it's also only going to be, they say they want to limit it to 2,000 copies. Um, so the game, even on Kickstarter, has a limit of 2,000 people can pledge for it. There's still like 1,500 copies left, so it's not like you have to freak out and go, you know, kill a person to get it. Um, but that would make you a murderer. And you just want a cool game. So just casually, on your own time, if it sounds interesting, click the Kickstarter. <laughs> and Okay, well, I, I often like uh, in this stuff just go on tangents because I think it's funny, but I think it's also weird, and I just imagine a person watching this show and just going like, what? Why is he talking about murdering people? And I don't know. I don't cut it out because why not? But that's the news for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, definitely go like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe. Uh, go subscribe to our now <laughs> award-nominated podcast, which is crazy. And if you get a chance, go vote for all the stuff you like on the Board Game Geek Golden Geek Awards. Um, this week's question comes from... I didn't turn the page soon enough. This week's question comes from at Benny275 via Twitter. And they ask, what's the best game that has programming as a mechanic? And the answer to that question is Robo Rally. I don't. I'm not going to say that's the best game because I don't know. You know, that's a subjective thing. But um, certainly, my favorite game that has a programming mechanic is Robo Rally. Um, I love. I love the mechanic in Robo Rally that as you program robots, basically you've got a hand of cards, and each one tells a robot to do a different thing: pull a U-turn, move forward two spaces, whatever. Um, and you have five different slots, and as your robot gets damaged, those slots start getting locked in. So whatever your robot was doing on the fifth slot, if it's damaged, it now just does that, which means it's broken. So you get to control four, but if the last slot you had was move forward two spaces, no matter what, it's going to move forward two spaces. Then if it takes more damage, then the fourth one's locked in, then the third one, then the second one. So then you just wind up with this robot that's just going absolutely haywire and running into lasers and knocking other robots off and crazy, and it's just a really fun, really interesting game uh, that... I am a big fan of, and I think it totally exemplifies the programming mechanic that is used in board games, and I'm actually a pretty big fan of that mechanic, and I should play more games uh, with that mechanic in it. But anyways, thanks so much for tuning in this week, and I will see you next week.